and I need an excuse to, you know, wear a hat to work. That's what makes my collection so unique to other people's collections. We don't get to Denver out too much, too often. The Natals in Chicago. Nothing like I Heart NYC. Nothing too souvenir-y, cheesy crap. Hello class, like I said before, gonna go over a few hats today, just a few, just to keep it, you know, nice, short, and uh, not overgorge you with so many hats, and I know that I have so many hats I want to share with you, but patience, class, patience, young grasshoppers. That's samurai stuff, or Jedi stuff, isn't it? Anyways, so we're just gonna go over a few hats today. We're gonna go over hats number 11 through 15. So, let's start out with number 11. Number 11, I got on, I would say, one of my best summer vacations in my, uh, in my years. That year, the uh, destination was out west. We uh, went to Colorado, went to... Las Vegas, went to um, Arizona, went then through um, New Mexico, the Four Corners, that was a big deal for our family, uh, and then through Texas and then back up. Big deal for me for that trip, uh, gonna be honest, uh, got really excited when we were in Denver, because I was excited because of the Denver Broncos Stadium, because I was a big Broncos fan for so many years, and finally got to see it in person. We don't get to Denver out too much, too often, the Natals in Chicago, so it was nice to see it. And I got a girl's number who I had a big crush on from my days in high school, so that was huge for me, for her to text me first. So that was a really fun trip, and the big destination was the Grand Canyon. So I have my Grand Canyon souvenir dad hat, it's, a, it's an adjustable can see in the back it's got the uh, buckle loop uh yeah that side uh yeah very very worn out as you can see from kind of like the sweat marks and the dust and uh, i think that used to be white anyways so this was a nice hat i got uh this kind of started my whole uh tradition of getting hats on vacations the big rule actually no my dc trip was anyways uh, the rule for our family was on vacations, we were allowed one souvenir, pretty much. I mean, there was some leeway here and there, but we were given one souvenir, and I like to get hats. So, I got a Grand Canyon hat. The Grand Canyon just celebrated its 100th anniversary being a national park. I mean, the Grand Canyon has been there for eons, literally, for millions of years. And any geologist feel free to correct me in the comments down below. It was in February of 1919 that it was dubbed a official national park. So happy birthday to National Park on the big 100. And uh, this has been a nice uh, work hat that I've used when uh, doing yard work. All right, let's move on to hat number 12. So hat number 12, I got, I realized in 2012, back in uh, my senior year, I was given a choice either to go to the New York City uh, uh, kind of band field trip. Every other year, every pretty much even year, the marching band goes on like a big trip. My sophomore year, we went to Atlanta, Georgia for a big marching band competition. That one was a mandatory thing. Then in 2012, the big trip was going to New York City for the Veterans Day Parade in uh, Times Square. And... I didn't go because I eventually chose to go to the Harvard Mile Congress in uh, Boston in uh, February. Trust me, it was well worth it to go to Boston instead of New York. So I, uh, my sister and mom went because my sister was in the band. And they brought me back a simple New York City hat. Uh, this is like really simple, really nice. And this is like one of my underrated hats. 
uh, very simple. It's, I mean, the NYC kind of blends in, but because it's like a it's like a navy, but the um, NYC is kind of like a grayish, like a like a steel gray or blue, but it's still you know spells out New York City. Nothing too flashy. Nothing like I Heart NYC. Nothing too souvenir-y, cheesy crap. But it's really nice. Uh, it's nice fit. It's an adjustable. It's got the metal loop in the back. I don't wear it enough. Uh, it's really nice hat. I mean, I'm not a big fan of New York City because Chicago is the best. It's got the better pizza too and better sports teams. But this is a very nice hat that I have that I uh, really appreciate that my sister got me as a gift. All right, let's move on to hat number 13. So hat number 13, if you uh, remember from my first history lesson, uh, my first two hats were hats. They weren't considered like baseball caps, but that's what makes my collection so unique to other people's collections. I think most other people, when I talk to hat collectors on social media or through YouTube, um, most people don't consider other hats to be part of a hat collection. Everyone's just so focused on, you know, a baseball cap, which is fine. But for me, those uh, non-cap hats uh, stand out for me and uh, really like them. My number 13 hat is my gray winter hat with built-in earmuffs. Now, these earmuffs aren't the best, really. They're, like, they're more flappier than my grandpa hat. But this one is a nice, solid color. Uh, as you can, if you remember from my grandpa hat, when I went over it, it's a uh, very patterny, like a weird checkerboard. I love it, but this one is just a nice, simple gray. So whenever I'm, you know, trying to look fancy-ish, going in the winter time, this is what I wear. So let's move on to hat number fourteen. So number fourteen is a another ivy cap. It's my summer beige hat. I got this from Target, uh, probably going into my freshman year of college, as I look through my um, inventory list of when I got the hat, that's how I inventory everything in uh, chronological order, best I can. So this is a uh, nice summer hat, uh, nice beige, plain, simple cap, uh, works very well with my tan cargo shorts I always wear in the summer. You know rotating through the two pairs I have that I pretty much wear through the whole summer because khaki goes with pretty much everything. This is my uh, one of my very standard summer caps and unfortunately it's kind of gotten uh, some wear and tear, um, some sweat marks especially on the bottom there but uh, it's a very very simple and it's a hat that I've appreciated for a long time. Let's move on to the last one for this session on to hat number 15. All right, so for our last hat, number 15 is a uh, Chicago hat, Chicago-themed. Back when I started at Fresh Time, it's a uh, grocery store, we were uh, allowed to wear uh, sports apparel on Sundays when this team played. And I needed an excuse to, you know, wear a hat to work, so I picked up at Dick Sporting Goods a Chicago Bears, Da Bears, Brand 47 Velcro Adjustable, with the Bears word scripting on the back. Very, very nice, very nice hat. Um, I mean, I do, I did eventually get a 5950 Bears hat with the uh, Bears face on it. I think eventually I'll get a Bears 5950 with the uh, C on it, but this one with the Brand 47 C, this is just so nice. I mean, it also helps with the great underbill. Fantastic hat, I wore this a lot. Uh, when the Bears were going through their uh, down years and their up years, and especially getting into uh, 2018 when they had the really nice uh, run that they had. Uh, I was a little hesitant to uh, wear the newer Bears hats because, you know, this one has I've stuck with for a while. I mean, I've only had it since 2014, but it's felt like I've had this for a longer time because uh, the Bears and I run deep. So, this is hat number 15. All right, class, that's going to end it for part two of my hat history lecture series. If you uh, aren't caught up with uh, the hats, uh, part one should be somewhere around here on the screen or in the 
description below. So uh, catch up if you can. Pretty easy to at this point. And uh, wait for part three to come out uh, sometime soon. Part three will get a little interesting and I'll explain it why there's kind of a ghost hat. Ooh, ghost hat. Ooh, ghost. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, commenting down below which hat you like of my uh, history hats here. So, hats off to you for watching. Class dismissed. Bye, guys.